Hellhole and Schoolhouse Cave, located in Germany Valley, West Virginia, is one of the world's largest hypernacular for endangered species of bats. The caves are extremely important natural resources for ensuring the protection of these bats. For several years, Greer Industries and Extreme Endeavors have been monitoring the environments these bats choose for hibernation. Having to rappel over 150 feet to get into Hellhole to place sensors is not an easy endeavor. It is dangerous and awe-inspiring. Reading this sign while you enter through the gate sets a tone, which is a unique combination of humility and anxiety. Several innovations and discoveries have been made monitoring these caves. Extreme Endeavors developed a microclimate monitoring system to measure the environmental profile of the caves. Continuous monitoring has verified that the caves have not been disturbed. Mainstream media loves to promote the negative impacts that large mining companies have on the environment. But what about the positive things that the responsible companies are doing to help protect the environment and its natural resources? Greer Industries, with the help of Extreme Endeavors, has gone well beyond their requirements to raise the bar in environmental protection. Performing years of scientific research and data collection, they have proven to be ecological stewards of natural resources, ensuring the protection of both the Indiana and the Virginia big-eared bats. Bats are a vital part of any ecosystem. A single bat can eat up to a thousand insects nightly, and they provide pollination for flowers and fruit trees. Most bats hibernate in caves during the winter. In the summer, many leave the caves to roost in trees or buildings, while others live in caves year-round. The microclimates in Hellhole and Schoolhouse Cave provide essential and critical habitats for Indiana and Virginia big-eared bats. These bats are on the endangered species list with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. The Indiana bat hibernates in Hellhole and in the summer leaves the cave to roost under the loose bark of trees. The Virginia big-eared bat hibernates near the entrance of Schoolhouse Cave and roosts in the back of the cave during the summer, which is opposite of what one would expect. Biologists have a basic understanding of bats. They hang from a ceiling by relaxing their muscles rather than contracting, which saves energy. Each type of bat has its own unique echolocation pattern. However, there are still many things that are not understood about these fascinating creatures. For example, how does a bat find a cave or know that the cave extends deep enough to be a suitable habitat? When choosing a hibernation or roost site, why do they prefer specific locations? Why do they return to the same hibernation and roost sites year after year? Our research seeks to contribute to answering some of these unknowns. Our focus on the microclimate of Hellhole and Schoolhouse Cave has provided valuable insight into bat habitats. Previously, the cave temperatures were monitored using equipment which had low-resolution analog to digital converters, which resulted in quantization error. The sampling rate was also not high enough to measure the dramatic changes in the temperature of the passages. Lack of macroclimate data made correlation impossible. Because of the dynamic nature of caves, improvements were required to have the precision and resolution to accurately define the profiles of the microclimate. Throughout the years of data collection and analysis, a considerable amount of information about the caves has been learned. Caves are an environment that is dynamic in nature, always changing based on the conditions surrounding the cave. This is a graph of the recorded temperatures in shiproom passage of Hellhole. As you can see by the oscillations of the graph, daily cyclical changes are evident. In the lower Sodalis site, we see that temperatures are much more stable. Comparing the two on the same scale, 
we see that different areas of the cave have different microclimate profiles, which adds to the complexity of understanding the environment. Even a thermally stable passage, like the lower Sodalis site, can show variations. The beginning of this data set shows large temperature oscillations that quickly stabilize. This change correlates with a significant amount of rainfall, which indicates that when the water table drops, the passage behind the sensor is opened to affect the microclimate. The geometry of the cave and the air pressure from the macroclimate are important influences on the microclimate. The changes in air pressure sometimes pushes the outside environment into the cave and sometimes pulls the air from the back of the cave. This pushing and pulling on the cave environment creates a draft. Pushing transports the macroclimate into the cave, while pulling moves a volume of air toward the front of the cave. These drafts can create vortices that affect the temperature and pressure profiles in individual cave passages. Influence from daily pressure variation or weather patterns are revealed by transforming the axis of the temperature data from the time domain to the frequency domain, a mathematical process called a discrete fast Fourier transform. The amount of influence from weather is evident at lower frequencies, and the effect of daily pressure changes can be seen in the higher frequencies. This pressure change process can also be measured by cross-correlating the micro versus the macro climate pressure data. The cross-correlation is a mathematical calculation that reveals the lag time between the pressure change from outside to inside the cave. When presenting the data describing the pressure change process to NASA's Langley Research Center, a new concept of cave detection on Mars was born. A new project under the Innovative Partnership Program sought to use infrasonic or low-frequency sound technology to detect caves from the noise created by the pressure changes. This graph shows the infrasonic spectrum recorded at the entrances of schoolhouse, Cass, and Castle Caves. Different spectral content is measured based on the size of the opening. The data for Schoolhouse Cave revealed acoustical harmonics based upon the spacing of the bars on the gate. The infrasonic research led to further insights that challenges some common assumptions about bats. It is well known that bats have superior hearing in the high frequency range but no research has been found about the entire spectrum of a bat's hearing. What about the low frequencies? Can a bat hear infrasonic sounds? If so, could they locate caves based on this infrasonic sound a cave emits? The controversy with bats and wind farms is a growing issue. Bats are killed when their organs rupture while flying through the pressure differential created from the blades of a wind turbine. Wind turbines create infrasonic signatures similar to caves. Could this attract bats to windmills? This project goes well beyond bat habitat protection. The cave monitoring technologies developed have been transformed to provide environmental benefit in other areas, such as control systems for drinking water, treatment of industrial runoff, and power monitoring and conservation. From the beginning, Greer Industries' vision was to provide more benefit than simply fulfilling their permitting requirements. By filling the void of information needed to effectively support microclimate research, Greer Industries has proven to be champions in environmental stewardship. This project would not be possible without the cooperation from all agencies involved. We would like to thank the West Virginia Division of Natural Resources the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection for their contributions in this endeavor. <music>